Hello everyone, my name is Magat and together with my group, we will be talking about the Federation of Malaya. In the measures of Malaysian history, 16 September 1963, the Federation of Malaysia was formed following by the agreement of Federation of Malaya, Singapore, North Borneo, Sabah and Sarawak. But what is a federation? A federation is a geopolitical entity in which small entities such as terrorists or states come together to form a bigger entity. The federal government will govern this bigger entity while the smaller entities will retain jurisdiction to enact laws and govern in certain defined areas. Countries such as Malaysia, Canada and Germany are examples of a federation. For going into details, who has involved and how did it happen? Existing from 1 February 1948 until 16 September 1963, Federation of Malaya was originally British Malaya contained with 9 Malay states and 2 British Straits settlement which was Penang and Malacca. The Malayan Union was officially formed on 1 April 1948. This purpose was to improve the efficiency of administrative system. However, a part of the Malayan Union's plan was to hand off Malay sovereignty over the Malay states and the extension of common citizenship to immigrant communities. This issue was seen as a negative outcome to Malay political standing only that it's a negative impact to the people too since citizenship was easily granted without proper process. A video of the meeting that were held in the King's House on 21st January. Itu, Tengku berada di London menemui Perdana Menteri British Tuan Harold Macmillan meninjau pendapat kerajaannya mengenai rancangan Malaysia. Salah satu hasilnya ialah perlantikan Suruhanjaya Kobol. Suruhan Jaya Kobol tiba di wilayah Borneo untuk meninjau pendapat rakyat Sabah dan Sarawak mengenai persekutuan Malaysia yang diura-urakan. Diketuai oleh Lord Kobol, Suruhan Jaya terdiri dari Sir Anthony Abel, Sir David Watterson, Encik Muhammad Ghazali Shafi dan Datuk Wong Pao Ni. Selama 8 Julai 1963, London. Perjanjian Malaysia ditandatangani. Suatu ketika yang bersejarah, perjanjian yang termaktub membawa kemerdekaan dan penghidupan baru kepada seramai 3 juta orang lagi umat manusia. Zaman baru bermula, kemerdekaan tercipta. Mereka menggabungkan diri dengan saudara yang telah sedia ada hubungan sejarah, bahasa, agama, budaya dan ekonomi dengan mereka. Searah setujuan menerusi Malaysia, mereka memperjuangkan nasib bersama. The British Malay Plan or Conference prepared the Federation of Malaya Agreement between June and December 1946. The result of the meeting in them produced a 100-page blue book which was signed by King House by the Malay rulers and Sir Edward Jen on 21 January. Sir Edward Jen was the representative of the British government and he was responsible for the agreement. However, the Malay rulers was afraid of their power being taken, so they proceed to sign the agreement. The agreement of Malayan Union was placed soon prepared for the establishment of the Federation of Malaya on 1 February 1948. One of the Malay rulers was also restored Moving on, extensive Malay opposition to the plan caused the British to pursue confidential consultations 
with representatives of the newly formed United Malays National Organization, which is AMNO, and the Malay rulers. Thank you, Magat. So right now, I'll be continuing my points of presentation. But before that, assalamualaikum to Madam Nili and also my fellow classmates. Hope you are in good conditions and in pink of health. So I will be explaining about a brief uh, history on the list of member states. So from 1946 to 1948, the 11 states formed a single British crown colony known as Malayan Union. Due to the opposition from Malay nationalists, the Union was disbanded and replaced by the Federation of Malaya, which restored the symbolic positions of the rulers of the Malay states. And within the Federation, while the Malay states were protectorates of the United Kingdom, Penang and Malacca remain British colonial territories, like the Malayan Union before it. The Federation did not include Singapore, despite its uh, traditional connections with Malaya. So, example of the, sorry, example of the uh, eleven states is Johor, Malacca, Pulau Pinang, Kedah, Negeri Sembilan, Perak, Kelantan, Pahang, Perlis, Selangor, and Terengganu. Uh, which makes a total of 11 states so next we will uh, continue with the points which is the conditions of citizenship of the federation of malaya were further tightened using law enforcement and naturalization by application under the laws the following were automatically granted citizenship and the first condition is that a citizen needs to be of the of the Sultan of any state. And second condition, which is uh, the British subjects born in Penang or Malacca who have lived in the Federation continuously for 15 years. And the third point is anyone born in the Federation whose parents were born and lived continuously for 15 years in the Federation. And lastly, anyone who is born in the Federation who is fluent in Malay and practices Malay tradi traditions on a daily basis. So if a person meets this criteria, citizenship will be granted through naturalization or application. And the first criteria is uh, if a person born and lived in the Federation of Malaya for at least 8 to 12 years before the request was submitted, and also if a person lived at least 15 out of 20 years in the Federation of Malaya before making the application. And lastly, my point will be the applications for granted citizenship have to be properly complied with a swear allegiance and give reasons for their residentship in the Federation and neither English, English or nor the Malayan language must be fluent. That's all for my uh, presentation points. I'll continue back with Magat. Thank you. The Federation of Malaya was led by British High Commissioner, which was Edward Guy and Donald McGillivray. They hold the power of executive and assisted by Federation of Malaya Executive Council and Federation of Malaya Legislative Council. Seven official and seven unofficial members were part of the Federation of Malaya Executive Council. The Federation of Malaya Legislative Council consists of High Commissioner who is in charge as Council President. Fourteen official and fifteen official members who is in charge to speak for straight settlements, business community and all races Nine state council Yang Lipatul, which are heads of state. Unofficial members that includes chief ministers and two ministers who act for the straight settlements. High commissioner would be advised by the Malay Conference of Rulers. Chief minister replaced the British residents in each state of federation. Separation of powers of the federal and state governments. How do we know the purpose of the Federation Agreement? 
due to cite the powers of the federal and state governments. Uh, respective states hold a lot of responsibility and one of it is financial matters. Customs and religious issues was handled by the Sultan with full power. However, the British government was given responsibility to administer foreign policy and defence. To conclude, on 1 February 1948 marks the Federation Agreement. Alright, now let's come down to the conclusion, which is the Malaya Federation has a major impact on the history of our country as it marks the day towards our own independence. So while the war wasn't going on in our country to clean land, the voyage was made by the representative of our own country, which is Dato On Jafar and also Tunku Abdul Rahman Uchal Hajj. And these proud names are why without diplomatic interference, we can live peacefully and freedom according to our rules, customs and cultures. Our generation should know, uh, recognize Malaysia's history through documentaries, books and also the internet learning. This is because we should educate the people and become proud of our roots as citizens of the current generation and it is very important to keep people conscious of Malaysia's history to not repeat the same, the same history. And after Merdeka, the Federal Independence Act 1957 was established and this act is an act which provides for and relates to the establishment within the Commonwealth of the Federation of Malaya as an independent sovereign country. In short, history is not just a session to tell stories, but an important message, information, and impact which shows us what is intended. Hopefully, the spirit of independence should always be in our Malaysian society. That's all for me and for our group. Thank you.